students, and welcome to our second unit. My name is Ms. Shanil Jerick, and it is my pleasure to share with you the physical and cognitive development in middle childhood. In this session, you will gain knowledge on the physical and cognitive changes and health in middle childhood. Therefore, after this lesson, you will be able to describe physical changes and health in middle childhood, explain cognitive changes in middle childhood, discuss language development in middle childhood, identify children with different types of disabilities and the issues in educating them. Let's begin by examining the term middle childhood. Middle childhood refers to the stage between early childhood and adolescence. This is usually between the ages of 6 through 12. It is important to note that some authorities divide middle childhood into two categories. These are early middle, ages 6 to 9, and late middle, ages 10 through 12. During this paramount period, children go through significant physical, emotional, cognitive, and social development. Like infants, toddlers, and preschoolers, these older children grow physically and cognitively, although their growth is slower in comparison to early childhood development. At this point, you might be wondering, what is child development? Child development refers to the process through which human beings typically grow and mature from infancy through childhood. The different aspects of growth and development that are measured include physical growth, cognitive growth, and social growth. Child development focuses on the changes that take place in humans as they mature from birth to about age 70. In this unit, we will focus on the development of middle childhood. Physical changes. Let us think about physical changes. What physical changes occur during middle childhood? Physical development in middle childhood is characterized by considerable variations in growth patterns. These variations may be attributed to gender, ethnic origin, which refers to where the child comes from or the, child, the child's roots. Genetics, features that are passed on from, the, from parents to their offsprings, hormones, nutrition, environment, or disease. Careful observation in the development of children would reveal that while children in middle childhood follow the same basic developmental patterns, they do not necessarily mature at the same time or at the same rate. This is most evident in gender since most girls experience a pre-adolescent growth spurt between the ages of 9 or 10. On the other hand, most boys experience the same growth spurt between the ages of 11 or 12. However, children who do not receive adequate nutrition or medical attention may be at risk for stun or what we refer to as delayed growth development. According to Raymond and Johnson 2021, children who live in countries where malnutrition is not a problem tend to be taller than those who live in other countries where malnutrition is an issue. 
body growth. By the beginning of middle childhood, children typically have acquired a leaner, more athletic appearance. Girls and boys still have similar body shapes and proportions until both sexes reach puberty. During this time, girls and boys grow about two to three inches and gain about five pounds per year until puberty. The lower part of the child's body is growing faster than the upper part due to cephalocardial development. Skeletal bones and muscles broaden and lengthen, which may cause children to experience pains. It is careful to note that skeletal growth in middle childhood is also associated with losing the deciduous, or what we call baby teeth. By the end of early middle development, Children's foreheads become less rounded, bones in the legs and arms longer and stronger, nose becomes more marked, waistline and abdomen flatten as they lose their pudgy baby look. Muscle strength increases as the child becomes more active, as bones lengthen and broaden and muscles strengthen. Many children want to engage in strenuous physical activity and can participate for longer periods of time. So the little Jason that once cried to do the bunny hop is now requesting to move the desk from point A to point B. By late middle childhood development, between the ages of nine to 12, Puberty dances into a child's life. However, it is normal for the start of puberty to range from 8 through 13 years old in girls and 9 to 14 years old in boys. This is the time when children move through a series of significant natural and healthy changes. These physical, psychological, and emotional changes are a sign that children are moving from childhood towards adulthood. This poem will assist in identifying key physical changes in puberty. My legs are getting longer. My feet are growing too. I am starting to see pimples. I am glad that you are too. The boys are talking six packs. The girls discussing bras. Makeup, fashion, friendships. Boys are big on cars. Confusing and exciting, the self I feel and see. I guess I am changing into an adult me. Throughout most of middle childhood, girls are smaller than boys and have less muscle mass. As girls enter puberty, however, they may be considerably larger than boys of the same age who enter puberty a few years later. Once boys begin sexually maturing, their heights and weights eventually surpass the heights and weights of girls of the same age. Growth and motor skills. During middle childhood, children gross and fine motor skills are developed. Gross motor skills include skills such as sitting, standing, walking, running, jumping, lifting. The following occurs 
during gross motor skills development. Children gain more coordination in physical development. The skills of running, jumping, climbing, and dancing are more improved. Example, faster and with much more coordination. Children at this stage can sit still for longer periods and pay more attention. So little Jacob, that was always distracted, will now be paying full attention to Miss. As a result of this development, Childhood Obesity Foundation recommends lots of activities and exercises. They further advise that teachers must not exhaust students and make them become too fatigued. Since their bones are still growing, Bone ends can be damaged by falls or carrying too heavy weights or by too much pressure. Fine motor skills. During this period, there is a steady improvement of skills. Example, writing and drawing. Students develop better control of the fine muscles of the hands, which allow them to engage in activities such as making models and simple woodwork items, doing simple chores, and washing dishes. Writing becomes smaller and neater, and children at this stage can play musical instruments as fine muscle skills have developed. So students, what do you think are some recommended activities for children at this stage? stage. Jumping. Jumping. Very good. Kicking ball towards the goal. Kicking ball towards a goal. Excellent. Balancing. Balancing. Very good students. I see that you have been listening. By the end of middle childhood, children should accomplish the following changes. Fine motor skills catch up with gross motor skills. So not only will they write smaller and neater, but it will be done in a timely manner. Eye accommodation is complete. Gross motor skills improve rapidly. This is where you'll find children finding interest and succeeding in certain activities like mashramani dance competitions, cricket competitions, among others, because their rhythm and coordination are excellent. They also have the physical skills to play musical instruments and to do simple woodwork or other craft. Healthy bodies during middle childhood. Ensuring children's health is of paramount importance in middle childhood development. It is therefore imperative for parents to provide children with lots of fruit and vegetables. They should limit foods that are high in solid fats, avoid sugars or salt, and prepare healthier food for family meals. Keeping television sets out of children's bedroom is also a key health tip. Children should have a certain amount of screen time to avoid headaches, and to protect their vision. Making sure children get the recommended amount of sleep each night is also essential for holistic development. For children in middle childhood, nine to 12 hours sleep per day is required. This includes daytime naps. This is why monitoring screen time is pivotal in this digital age. Children should be encouraged to participate in an hour a day of physical activities that are age appropriate and enjoyable and offer variety. Children should be encouraged to participate in an hour a day of physical activities that are age appropriate and enjoyable. This will avoid complex diseases 
such as obesity, and children will grow into healthy adults. Equally important, talking with children about normal physical and emotional changes of puberty and showing them affection they need during that time will also help them mentally. Cognitive development. According to Piaget, children in early childhood are in the pre-operational stage of development in which they learn to think symbolically about the world. From ages 7 through 12, the school-aged child continues to develop in what Piaget referred to as the concrete operational stage of cognitive development. This involves mastering the use of logic in concrete ways. The child can use this logic to solve problems tied to their own direct experience, but has trouble solving hypothetical problems or considering more abstract problems. The child uses inductive reasoning, which means thinking that the world reflects one's own personal experience. For example, a child has one friend who is rude. That same child has a second friend that is rude, and then a third friend that is also rude. Using inductive reasoning, the child may conclude that all friends are rude. This way of thinking tends to change during adolescence as children begin to use deductive reasoning effectively. During this stage also, there is language development. In the middle development, communication, language, and literacy skills continue to develop. Children become skilled communicators using both verbal and nonverbal communication. They use fluent and grammatically correct speech, including correct verb tenses, word order, and sentence structure. Their vocabulary continues to expand to include subject specific terminology, synonyms, and local slang. They increase the length of recalled stories, tell jokes, and adapt their communication to meet the needs of their listeners and communication partners. During this period of development, phonological awareness supports their ability to read and write. Most children successfully adopt to a variety of strategies to support them to read fluently and for meaning. As readers, they read for pleasure, to seek information and for other purposes and can think critically about the content they are reading. Equally significant, during this period of development, children are writing with increasing complexity, writing in different forms and adapting their writing to suit the audience. This diagram depicts concrete operation. And we will go through each aspect of concrete operations. The first one is seriation. This is concerned with ordering things or putting them in sequence from smallest to largest or tallest to shortest. Classification. This has to do with sorting things out into categories. Example, grouping animals into separate groups. Reversibility. This means that actions can be reversed. For example, Ashana uses a phone that is Apple brand. An Apple brand is a phone. A phone can be an Apple brand. The next one is conservation. This is to understand that something can stay the same in quantity even though it looks different. 
For example, a ball of Play-Doh is the same despite the shape. Decentration is linked to conservation. This helps them to conserve correctly. Example, a row of 20 pencils is a row of 20 pencils, no matter how far apart they are. Sociocentricity. This is where the child is no longer egocentric. They are able to understand that everyone's opinions matter. They learn to think about other person's feelings and not just their own. Implication for teachers. Children at this stage need to move around. Writing on the chalkboard or other activities that require movement will be most suitable for them. They will have difficulty focusing on small print or fine details. For that reason, it is necessary for the teacher to use large letters on the chalkboard and teaching aids should be large enough for the children to see. Failing to do so will cause eye strain by blinking, rubbing eyes, or closing one eye to see better. Since children at this stage enjoy showing off their skills and making things, it is the teacher's job to provide activities to facilitate the required skills. Teachers should encourage the students on healthy foods since they are more fancy on junk foods. Too much sugar may lead to hyperactivity resulting in difficulty staying calm in the classroom. This has brought us to the end of Unit 2 on Physical and Cognitive Development on Children in Middle Childhood. Once again, I am Ms. Shanil Jerry. Thank you.